yeah. And kids want to be physically active, you know, that's, oh, so that's bad. what they're meant to do and run around and play and have fun and do things with their body. And, you know, to demonstrate that and show them, here's what you can do. I uh, just love that. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool, man. Well, let's talk a little bit more about some stuff that you, you kind of do. Let's talk about diet. Because most people, when they approach, you know, like a legitimate muscle building program, they're looking at bodybuilding.com, they're looking at, you know, uh, the books, uh, Arnold's Encyclopedia of Modern Bodybuilding. They're looking to those pros, those maybe not so um, uh, natural pros for yeah. diet advice. And yeah. I'm just, I, I, if you can do six meals a day and, and that, that flows with you, more power to you. I'm all about it. But I'm not exactly, uh, I'm not exactly sold on that being the only way to get results over time. So share with us your diet philosophy, what you've seen work for yourself and, uh, and others as well. Yeah, absolutely. And my approach really is based in what works in the real world. Yeah. And for people who are not competitive bodybuilders, who are not dedicating the entire life to this kind of thing. Sure. And when I first started training, I built myself up from being 145 pounds to about 220 pounds within eight months. And um, a lot of that was, you know, cafeteria food and went to college. So <laughs> I was literally was food, like, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was literally eating like 8,000 calories a day. I calculated it once. I was having two breakfasts, two lunches, two suppers, and then snacks in between. It was just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't necessarily need to be eating that much. And I didn't always know what I was doing at that point, but I had a massive appetite and, <laughs> you know, I was training twice a day, six days a week, so I was really growing fast from all that. But what I do now actually is a whole lot different than what I was doing then. And uh, there are days where I'll eat two meals, generally it's three meals, but that's it. I don't do six meals a day. I don't spend my whole life cooking. I'm actually not much of a cook at all. Right. Uh, basically what I'll do is uh, right now these days, I'll have a very simple breakfast. Um, if I'm trying to build muscle, I'll do like a half a dozen eggs and a bowl of oatmeal. Right. You know, that's easy. Anybody can make that. Right. And for lunch, it's something small and simple, you know, maybe a um, can of tuna and peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Not, not even all that much. And then um, my post-workout meal, that's where I really load up on the calories because that's when I, I think your body can really use all those calories and use all the nutrients you're putting in. So, you know, the first few meals are basically not, not nearly as big as this post-workout one. And, um, you know, that's going to be a really good source of protein, like a pound of ground beef, for example, what I'll do. And then I'll boil like eight or 10 potatoes and I'll just mash it all up into a bucket. And just <laughs> that. Like literally at most of my meals are eaten out of giant bowls. <laughs> so it's, um, it basically comes down to the realization that you don't need to stress about what you're eating. If you're eating reasonably good and you're getting good food, that's not, you know, ridiculously processed. That's not junk. Sure. You're going to be fine. And I think a lot of people actually set themselves back by stressing about food too much. Sure. Uh, you know, when it really comes down to it, you put good, good food in, you put enough calories in, you're going to build muscle as long as your training is eliciting that muscle growth response. Yeah. And that's basically the bottom line with nutrition is, you know, you, you get your greens, you get your vegetables, you get your fruits. You don't really need to get, you know, so, so detailed into like meal plans. Like for example, I include meal plans with my with my training programs because I know a lot of people like having something to follow. Sure. I've never used a meal plan in my life. I, <laughs> I don't touch them. I can't stand them. But I include them because I know a lot of people do well on them. Right. For right. me, yeah, I just, you know, I freestyle it. I, I eat what I want based on the nutrient profile that I'm looking to do, based on the goal that I'm looking to accomplish. And that's it. You know, if I want to lose fat, I will go low carb and I'll cut the calories quite a lot. If I want to build muscle, then I'll go in the other direction. I'll eat a lot and I'll change, you know, the composition of my meals. But I don't try and measure everything. I don't try and count right. calories. I can't stand that kind of approach. I know some people love it and can't do it any other way. And that is fine for them and more power to them. Right. But for me, I, I actually like to refer to it as a nutritional sledgehammer where basically I don't want to be fine tuning I'm sorry, one second. No worries. I don't want to be um, like fine tuning everything. Right. You know, I, I basically say if I want to lose fat, I'm just going to cut my calories, boom. I'm going to eat like this, boom, done. And then I just eat within those parameters. And then when I switch up, you know, I eat within those parameters and I find it so much more simple. Um, and then I can focus on the training that gets the job done because that's really what I'm mostly all about is, you know, focusing on the training. I know enough nutrition to get the job done in that department, but I don't you know, focus or stress on that. 
in particular. So yeah, it's, it's interesting. So it sounds like you just take kind of a more simple approach. I like your your term of like you know nutritional sledgehammer, right? Like if you're gonna if you're gonna shed some fat, you're not gonna worry about like precise this and precise that. You're like, okay, what do I need to do to get in fat burning mode? Well, I need to make sure that my blood sugar levels stay stabilized, and that I'm not eating a lot of carbohydrates, and that I'm eating less food than I burn each day. You know yeah. what I mean? Like that's it's really simple. It's like, okay, I'm going to eat less food, more protein, more fat, less carbs. I want to gain muscle. Well, I'm probably just going to focus on my training really hard and I'm just going to down the hatch with high quality foods and just, and as much of it as I can. I mean, it's yeah. simpler than uh, a lot of people when they're, like you said, they're looking at like all these little details and stuff. And I, I just, over time, the older I get, the more I realize that people have a harder time with more, um, with more rules. Yeah, and the less rules you can give them, the more the more long term results you see them get. So, yeah, like literally at the when I'm wait, I'm right now about two ten. If I were to go on a fat loss diet, I don't aim for like a two hundred or three hundred calorie restriction deficit. Right. I I drop my calories down to like twelve hundred calories. You just starve for a couple. I just of weeks. go. <laughs> boom, I drop the bottom out, and I you know I'll eat literally. When I'm eating for mass, I'll eat more in one meal sometimes than I will eat in like three days of my fat loss training. Right. You know, but I've conditioned myself to be able to work with that. You know, I can train at a high intensity even not having eaten anything for 24 hours. And your body does get used to it. And some people, the first time they do it, it just about kills them. But I've, I've kind of found that once your body gets acclimated to that, you can train at a relatively high intensity. Like, for example, going for that two-mile run with a 70 pound sandbag. I do that when I've been fasting for 24 hours. Sure. Haven't eaten anything, throw that on. You know, you're burning a lot of fat when you hit that, you know, you're burning a lot of calories. So, you know, that nutritional sledgehammer approach, that's what I like about it is it takes all the guesswork out of it for me and makes it a lot more simple. You know, just drop the calories, keep the nutrient nutrients up. You have to be getting those micronutrients. Sure. Which is when you drop the calorie, your body doesn't always need calories. It needs the micronutrients. Sure. And, um, you know, as long as you're providing that and providing the, you know, the strength stimulus, you're not going to lose muscle. Sure. And uh, I think, you know, going back to the, uh, you know, this is kind of a total sidebar here, but I think that's one of the reasons that uh, people who are overweight tend to eat a lot is they tend to eat foods that are not nutrient dense. Right. So their body thinks that it's starving to death. Yeah. I so agree. the appetite is always there to try and get those nutrients, you know, but if you provide those nutrients, you don't necessarily need the calories. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's kind of a balance there. No, that's a really good point that you, the nutrients are more important uh, as far as satiating than, than the calories there. So it almost sounds like you just take an adaptability approach. Like you just look at it and say, like, okay, if you even if you go super low calorie, if you're giving your body the right stimulus, it's it's going to keep the muscle because you're you're telling it that you need it. You know, it's it's almost really primal. It sounds like the approach you take. I'm interested. What you think like is more important? Do you think the adaptability that you instigate with training is more important than the diet, or is it is there just like a plain synergy between the two? I think it's more the synergy. I think that uh, that old adage of you know training is they're losing weight or whatever is eighty percent nutrition. I think it's a mistake to even try and assign a percentage to that. Sure, because they're equally important. Training, nutrition, recovery. You know, they're all part of the same thing. Yeah. And you have to really kind of dial in all of them to really get the best results. Yeah. And if you, you know, slack off on one, it's not really a percentage. It's just, it affects everything. So it's, you know, I don't think any one is more important than the other. I think to a degree, you can out train a bad diet. Right. There are circumstances. I mean, you look at guys in prison who are just absolutely freaks of nature. And they're you eating know, prison they food. Don't eat food. They don't get supplements. <laughs> You know, bad diet, there's your example right there, you know. So what I'm saying is if you want to really get ripped and shredded, commit a crime and go to jail. That's my, that's, that's, my, the, that's the takeaway from this whole call, that's the, right? That's the takeaway, yeah. <laughs> no, that's I, really the key is violent crime. Yeah. I get what you're saying. Is, is Like, you know, if you, if you look at the, the spectrum of things, it's almost like what the most important thing you should be focusing on is perhaps what you're worst at in that trinity when you're looking at recovery, exercise, nutrition. You know, if you look at it and you go, okay, my, my recovery is great, my exercise is great, I'm still not getting the results I want, then you should probably focus on your diet. Or if your diet's great and your recovery is great, but your training kind of sucks, you should probably focus on your training. Does that sound kind of what you look at when you when you look at the full approach? Exactly, yeah. And, you know, when people come to me and they ask, you know, why am I not building muscle? I, the first thing I don't say is, you know, what supplements are you taking? Yeah. So, you know, are you making sure to take your whey protein and your casein yes. at night? 
Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Are you properly, you know, timing this out? Are you, no, it's none of that is important. It's um, if their training is good, then we look at their nutrition. We look at their recovery. Yeah. You know, if their nutrition and their training is good, then we look. Okay, you're getting three hours of sleep a night. You know, that's the problem. That might be an issue. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> you know, sure. so it's it all kind of mixes together as far as what's more important. It depends on essentially yeah, what your week is at at the moment. And you know, if you're trying to build muscle, your nutrition can be absolutely perfect. But if your training isn't eliciting the growth response, then you're not going to get any muscle. So, right. you know, if it's 80% nutrition, you'd think, oh, my, my training, my nutrition is perfect. You're not going to get 80% as much muscle as if your training was good too. Right. You know, it has to be that combination. So it's, uh, yeah. Awesome, man. Well, it sounds like you take a very simple and synergistic approach to gaining muscle, improving your body, and I, and I really dig it. So, Nick, I always ask people one final question before they get off the call, right? So you're the mad scientist of muscle building. You've been online for a long time, like a decade or more, I think. And yep. um, and a lot of people know you in this industry as the guy to go to when maybe you're stalled out on plateaus and progress. What's your secret to all the success you've had? I think the secret is a willingness not to be normal and Think outside uh, the box. Yeah. To basically have the willingness to experiment with different things and the willingness to try out different things. And, you know, sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes <laughs> I end up flipped over the back of a Swiss ball because I've tried to do, you know, something stupid. <laughs> yeah, you know, like literally I've done that where I said, okay, I'm going to do some, you know, dumbbell pullovers worth this 125 pound dumbbell using a Swiss ball. You know, forget the, the, the concept of levers. <laughs> yeah. So I put this thing over my head and went boom, straight up, back and over. And, uh, you know, oh, I got it on video. It was very funny. <laughs> oh, my God. That is too hilarious, man. Yeah. That's but, cool, you know, though. You got to be willing to put yourself out there to try these different things and to basically, you know, don't look at the gym as work. Look at it as an opportunity to have fun, to challenge yourself, and, you know, just push to really live your life and really feel yourself working. And, you know, the more you can really develop your physique and your strength, you'll feel more confident within yourself too. And you'll basically just have more fun in life. And I think that's really the key for me is just, I want to make sure people know that it's okay to try different things in the gym. You know, it doesn't matter what that other person thinks, you know, they're the ones who are going to be doing the same thing you just did because they see that it works, you know, right. literally like most of the people who do some of the crazy exercises that I do, they say, oh, yeah, everybody in the gym was staring at me. And then the next day they were all doing that same exercise <laughs> because they saw how, you know, how it worked and how this person was enjoying their training and, you know, it wasn't boring and it was interesting. And that's really the big takeaway that I want to convey is that, you know, training should be fun, should be interesting and should be challenging. Very cool. Awesome, man. Well, Nick, thank you so much for taking the time to get on the call. I'll post a link below the show. If you guys want to learn more about Nick and his programs, you can click that thing and check it out. So thanks again, Nick. Absolutely, Tyler. Good talk to you, man.